Good evening, everybody. I'm Nick Slayman. I'm a pediatric intensivist from the DuPont Hospital for Children, and welcome to the Heart Room in a Catechist. So in today's lesson, what we're going to work on a little bit is some of the structure and function of our two times enlarged heart that you can see here. And as you can tell, it's animated and anatomically correct. It's been sectioned along the front side so you can see into the chambers. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. And I may change the orientation of the heart a little bit to help kind of get things going. So what we want to start with is the right side of the heart, which you see here. And we have venous return, so blue blood coming back from the head and neck, blue blood coming back from the torso and the legs, all has to return to the right side of the heart. And what it's going to return through is this large pipe right here, which is the superior vena cava. And it's going to return inferiorly through this pipe here, which is the inferior vena cava. So those two main vessels, superior vena cava coming from the head and neck, inferior vena cava coming from the torso, gut, legs, is all going to return to the right heart. And where it's going to return to in the right heart is this structure that you see here, and that's the right atrium. And what's nice about a catechist from a headset standpoint is if you have a VR headset like I do, you can actually walk into the heart put your head inside, look upward out the superior vena cava, and look downward through the inferior vena cava, and look all around in the right atrium. And this other structure that you can see from the inside that I'm going to describe to you is the tricuspid valve. So that's the separation from the upper chamber, the right atrium, and the lower chamber, the right ventricle. So I'm going to step back out again, tilt the heart a little bit for you, and show you here that we have the tri-leaflet tricuspid valve. That's what gives it its name of three valves or three leaflets. Tricuspid, tri meaning three. You can see that that valve separates the upper chamber that I was just in, the atrium, from this big pumping chamber, the ventricle. And you can see that it's anchored by these long strings, which are called chordae tendinae, the heart strings, and it anchors into the ventricular wall by these muscular bulbs, which are called the papillae or muscular papillae. So they prevent the valve from prolapsing up into the atrium. It's supposed to be a one-way street. Blood comes from the atrium down into the ventricle. And when the ventricle is trying to uh, contract and eject blood, this valve closes so blood doesn't regurgitate upward. But you may say to yourself, all right, well, where does it go if it's supposed to go forward? Well, where it goes next is right here in this valve, and that's the pulmonic valve. So from the right ventricle, that blue blood is going to be ejected out the pulmonic valve. And as you can guess, the pulmonic valve comes up here, and it's sectioned in this uh, computer Im uh, image, computer-generated image. But it's going to go left and right to the lungs. So that blue blood is going to get pumped from the right ventricle through the pulmonary artery. Arteries go away from the heart. Veins come to the heart through that pulmonary artery to the lungs. And it's going to split into the right and left pulmonary artery, go to the lungs and get red. It's going to pick up oxygen in the lungs at the alveolar capillary interface. Now, a couple things to say before we leave the right ventricle. The right ventricle is designed to pump blood to the lungs. The distance is short, and it's designed to pump under low pressure. It's not as strong and as muscular a pump as what we're going to address next, which is on the left side of the heart. So once that blood goes to the lungs and gets oxygen, it's got to come back to the heart again to be pumped out to the body. And it's going to come back through one, two, three, four pulmonary veins. So again, veins come to the heart, arteries go away. The pulmonary artery went away to the lungs to get oxygen. The four pulmonary veins are going to come back to the lungs and deliver oxygenated blood to the left side of the heart. Now let me turn the heart around. I'm going to stick my head in here again. And where I'm going this time is the left atrium. So just like we had a right atrium or top chamber, this time I'm in the left atrium. 
and I can see the two pulmonary veins on the left and the two pulmonary veins on the right. And this time, I'm looking down through a valve that only has two leaflets. So instead of a tricuspid valve, you could call this one a bicuspid valve or its real name, which is the mitral valve. Now, the mitral valve gets that name because the bicuspid valves come to a point like a triangle, and it looks like the hat that the pope wears, which is called a mitre. So our oxygenated blood has come back through the pul four pulmonary veins into the left atrium. It's dropped down into the left ventricle from that left atrium through the mitral valve. Now, we said the right ventricle is designed to pump a short distance and under low pressure. The left ventricle is so much more muscular. It is designed to pump from here and deliver oxygenated blood as far away as possible, your top of your head and the tip of your toes. So the left ventricle is a pumping chamber, and when that oxygenated blood gets pumped out, where does it go? I'm going to tilt the heart a little bit so you can see it. It goes right through here, which is the aortic valve. And if I tilt the heart again, it's tucked posteriorly to that pulmonary artery, and the aorta is just a big artery going away from the heart. Arteries away, veins too. So this aorta will curve up and drop down into the abdominal aorta, and it will have branches to go to the right arm, subclavian, carotid, right neck, left neck, left arm. So it's important to think of this as a dual action pump. You have a right side, you have a left side. They work in concert. You have the upper chambers and the lower chambers working in concert as well so that we get blood that's going forward all the time. We don't want blood regurgitating up. We want blood ejected out, ejected to the lungs, ejected out into the aorta to the rest of the body. So it is a pump as a unified machine, but it's a dual chambered pump, four chambered pump, if you will. But those right and left chambers work in concert. Those upper and lower chambers are supposed to work in concert as well. And some of the things that control that are the automaticity or the electricity of the heart that we'll talk about next time. So again, thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time in a catechist.